Well, hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, and today I'm going to show you a little Copic Bible journaling that made it into my Bible recently. I haven't done any Bible journaling on this channel in a while. I do have another channel just for my Bible journaling. But I have this stamp set from the Colorado Craft Company, and I was trying to figure out how to get this to fit in where the verse is that I wanted to do and it wasn't going to fit because the stamp is too wide. The, the verse is too wide as well as the image. So I decided to do something crazy and I took a piece of Nina cardstock and I'm going to stamp on that. I cut it to the exact size of my Bible and rounded two of the corners since my Bible has rounded corners and it'll make sure it fits just perfectly. And then I'm going to lay out my stamps and stamp them in whatever ink that you want to use for whatever technique you're going to use. I'm using Lawn Fawn's Jet Black, and it's one of my favorite inks for Copic stuff. You want something that's going to be friendly to whatever coloring medium you're going to use. Recently, I did another video with Colorado Craft Company stamps, and I did what I called sketchy card layouts, and did something very similar to this, but I'm going to show you how to do it on a whole page. Now, if you're not a Bible journaler, you could certainly do this on an art journal page. It does not have to be for Bible journaling. This whole technique idea will work for that too. But I'm using that other technique as a jumping off point by just creating lines. And I'm using a rolling ruler. A lot of people ask where I got that. I think I got it at my local store where they sell children's school supplies, I believe. Uh, you could probably also get one maybe over at Blick or something because I think they sell pretty much everything like that. I will try to find a link and put it in the doobly-doo if you want one, but you can get them real cheap at your, your local school supply store. Once I got a whole bunch of lines in there, and uh, you know you can put the lines wherever you want and not have to really think about it ahead of time because this is your sketching phase. You don't have to actually make any decisions till you get a pen out. But I got out some dies and some stamps and just started adding other images to the page. And... I, I knew I was going to do some fun coloring on this. It was going to be a fully saturated page, as you saw in the sneak peek at the beginning. So I used some hearts from the Folk Hearts die set. I don't even know if it's still available. It's really old. From Ellen Hudson. And I also used some Ellen Hudson flowers. The big peony in the bottom left, and then the leaf in the upper left, and the little flower are from the Mondo Hydrangea set. Because I just wanted some flowers on here. Some imagery as well. My whole idea for this was to create some sections in which I could do, for one, some doodling, and for two, some journaling. Because when I do my Bible journaling, I like to write messages in there, and I write down things God's doing in my life. I write down things He's told me. I write down prayers, my commitment to things that He tells me to do, and, you know, okay, yes, I will do it. And that's what I'm trying to create some sections in here where I can put some of that kind of content. So as I'm going in with my pen now, this is a Copic friendly pen. If you're using watercolor or something else, then by all means use whatever's going to work with that medium. And some of the lines I cross over each other, some of them I stop short, and I'm just creating different sections because I'm going to be able to color in each one of those sections. Some of them are going to go up higher and some are only going to block off smaller sections. And with something like the hearts, you can decide whether or not your hearts are going to cross over some of the linear areas or if they're going to just be looking like they're on the surface of all of it and you're not going to have any lines go through them. And I decided to kind of do a mix over all of this and just have fun with it. The stamps from Colorado Craft Company has, as a lot of theirs do, I don't know if all of theirs do, but a bunch of theirs have people where you just see the bottom of the person, which means you don't have to actually color the face to match whatever person is in the scene. So if you're a blonde, you don't have to worry about coloring blonde hair, but if the stamp has you know, long hair and you have short hair, it's not gonna look like you, or if the person that you are coloring it for has one kind of haircut and the stamp doesn't, then it's not going to match. But on something like this, when they cut off all the heads, it gives you some options that you don't have with some other stamp sets. It does create some challenges though for how you end it. 
And I would recommend going to their Instagram page because they post, of course, a lot of cards made with them. And you can get lots of ideas on how other people handle that. And what I've done here is just created a box that that image is in. It's the same thing I did on the sketchy card layout videos. I did one for my channel and one for Ellen Hudson's. And you can go see those. I'll have links to all of that in the doobly-doo as well and stuff over on the blog. But it kind of gives a frame for it, a, a little place for it to stop <laughs> instead of feeling like it just trails off into nothingness. And what I'm doing with my coloring here, my Copic coloring, is to create real warm colors in this one section. And I drew my pajamas. I have lots of mixed match pajamas. So I have one that has a yellow shirt and purple pants. And I, I colored yellow socks on there. So you can color this in any way you want. But I wanted all the warm colors in here and all the, the stuff that has yellow and gold and things. I'm going to use a little bit of yellow and gold in other areas of the coloring. But I'm going to focus them on here because that's the main image that I wanted to have for this page. And then I also want to draw attention to the psalm, the text of it that's up above. So I'm going to use some of that yellow up there too. But I just decided I was going to use a bunch of those kind of warm colors down below. Now I am going to speed this up more because it took me a long time to color this. But I thought I'd also talk a little bit about for Bible journalers out there who probably came to this video very excited that I was using Copics in my Bible. There are no Bibles that you can use Copic markers in. And the reason for that, if you think about it, a ream of Nina, which is what you would need to color your Copic markers on, a ream of Nina is 250 pages, and your Bible is, what, 1,000 pages, 1,500, 2,000, depending on the size of the font? You, you would never want to carry around a Bible that's as thick as you would need if you had Copic-friendly paper. It just ain't going to happen. Some people have asked if you can use page preps and then use the uh, Copic markers on top of that, and I would not do that to your markers. It's just dangerous to do that because those are, I, I don't know if it's a scientific truth, but it feels like those page preps are more of a, you know, gessos and things are more of an acrylic. They can actually ruin your marker nib. I, I did try it once just to see, and it got a kind of crusty thing going on, so I just didn't even want to mess with any of my markers because they're too expensive to do that with. But putting a page like this in your Bible and attaching it inside is one way that you can use your Copics and get a really powerful, strongly colored image. Because on Bible paper, you're not going to get this kind of really strong image. Uh, the paper is just really thin and it doesn't handle super heavy color. I think the only other medium that you could get this kind of intensity with would be like P.H. Martin's watercolors, because those come out really strong and really bright but most everything comes out much softer, which I don't find to be a problem, but some people just really want a lot of color. So I am just proceeding with the coloring of this and adding layers and layers of color and doing different fun techniques that I know of in Copic marker coloring. If you've taken my Copic Jumpstart class, there's all kinds of fun techniques. There's stuff in the Hex Art class. Uh, lots of different ways that you can add detail and, and lots of fun things to stuff like this. I'm doing some uh, reversing out of color by using lighter shades to make blobs of color. And then I'm going to use a black pen and a white pen to add a lot more detail and to add some of the text that I wanted to put in some of the sections. So, you know, that, that just gives me a world of opportunity to do tons of doodling. I mean, this was like a five or, five or six hour project, I think, to do this page. So it's not for those who are trying to get anything done quick. But it is one way that you can use your Copics in your Bible. This, however, is on this channel rather than on my Bible journaling channel because it is not Bible journaling made simple, which is the title of the book that I wrote because this is not even remotely simple. It also, this technique requires that you have Copic markers and you have all these supplies and you have other stamps. And a lot of Bible journalers are just getting started in art at all. They have no sense of all of these supplies and I don't want people on that channel to feel like they have to have all this stuff. But since I know that a lot of people that watch these videos have all the stuff, I thought I'd give you an idea for how you can use all of that stuff in your Bible journaling too. 
Now, if you even aren't a Copic marker user and you want to do something with watercolor or distress inks or something, you can do it on any kind of sheet of paper and adhere that into your Bible and tip it into your Bible. But you're going to end up with one of the problems that I had, which is, okay, now I've got all of the color coming through the back of this. So I put some double stick tape down, the Be Creative tape, and glued this onto a sheet of blank paper. Just I used really thin paper. I just used computer paper and then I trimmed it out all the way around it using my trimmer and I did the little corners with my corner chomper again so that I would still have that page. Now I've got a blank white side so that I can, you know, do some more writing, more journaling on the back of that page or something. But at least I don't have to look at all the crazy Copic marker coming through on the other side. But if you do other techniques, you may have that issue as well. So one more strip of the double stick tape, that Be Creative tape. It's super sticky. So what I do is line up the outside edge exactly where I want it, and I hold up that edge with the sticky part on it first get it exactly where I want it. And I don't press anything down until I am positive that it's going to be right there. Because otherwise, if you get it in the wrong place, you can't get that tape back up. But you do end up with a page in your Bible that kind of sticks out like this. It doesn't kind of lay down like Bible paper would. But for a special page like this, it might be worth it to you. You might even put this at the beginning or end of your Bible so it doesn't kind of stick up in the middle like this. And all I did was then highlight the verse itself opposite of the, the art page that I did. So there you go. There's one way that you can use Copics in your Bible. Now, I have one other tidbit for you, which is that there is a giveaway. I purchased one of these and Amy sent me one of these. So I ended up with two sets of this. So if you want to go leave a comment on my blog, because you can't do giveaways on YouTube, leave a comment on my blog and I will pick a winner in a week and send the stamp set out to someone. So I hope you win, good luck, and feel free to share that with your friends so they can enter as well. And I'll see you later, bye-bye.